Hello and Namaste, my name is Romana Purun. Today I am here in front of you all to just briefly talk about my recent trip to Rara Lake. So I was in Rara around last week and it's been such a beautiful trip and I am honestly lost for words, which is why I thought it would be important for me to be um, you know, in front of the camera like this so that you can see for yourself how genuinely uh, moved I have been by this place. Um, so Rara Lake is Nepal's largest and deepest freshwater lake. It falls between uh, Mugu and Jumla districts, which are the western, um, very remote and slightly underdeveloped um, parts of Nepal. And the lake itself falls within the Rara National Park, which is actually the country's smallest national park, but undoubtedly it is the most beautiful national park I've ever been to. Um, so on this video, I am attempting to be as insightful as I can in terms of you know how to reach uh, Rara, how what you can expect, um, the things that you can try out, you know things like that, because I honestly want you guys to go out there too, and you know, experience all the beauty, experience all the emotions that I experienced while I was there, and more. So yeah, I'm just hoping that this video will. Uh, make you guys pack your bags and just leave because Rara is that one place that must exist in everyone's um, bucket list for sure. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy and take care. Okay, so our journey started from Kalingi. We got the 7 o'clock bus to Nepal Gonj in the morning. Um, it was a very sticky ride because as you proceed towards the east, things are bound to heat up. So anyone who is thinking of getting the bus in Nepal Ganj as well, please consider getting the night bus because it, it will be less painful and you know it won't feel as long as it felt for us because our journey was 14 hours long and it felt like it was two days long journey. We have arrived at Nepal Ganj. We reached Nepal Ganj around 8 p.m. So we found somewhere to stay for the night. We woke up the next morning, <laughs> had our breakfast, and we went off to Nepal Ganj airport. This was my first time flying in Nepal, so I was a bit scared. But as soon as we took off, the aerial view from above um, cleared everything off my head. It was so beautiful. I mean, these hills, mountains, rivers that remain so pristine and untouched from the outside world, and they really make you question the idea of urban life. Before we skyrocketed towards the modern life, this was our identity, you know. And, you know, this is our origin. So I felt so blessed to be uh, present in that moment and I think I became slightly more appreciative of where I come from. But I'm not going to lie, it wasn't the smoothest journey. But we still made it. We made it to Dalja Airport, also known as Rara Airport. And it was 45 minutes long. This is also one of the uh, dangerous airports here in Nepal, according to the captains. Uh, I mean, with the landing and taking of runway just on the edge of a cliff, you will understand why it is scary. From Talja, we headed towards Rara National Park. The journey was jam-packed with flowers, pine trees, green grass, blue sky, cows, horses, flowers, and more flowers. 
So, you know, it was a very wonderful, wonderful walk um, from Talta to reach the shore of Rara. It is just 30 to 45 minutes um, long walk. But we obviously took longer than that because we were just so mesmerized by the beauty that we'd just been, um, you know, welcomed with. Upon reaching the Raratal, I was completely blown away. I was swept off my feet, let's say, with its blueness um, because the water was so clear, so blue, so peaceful. So, you know, of course, we we're bound to be speechless. <laughs> I'm sure all three of us felt deeper and deeper in love with Rara from the very first glance we had of it. So we walked for two more hours towards the hotels. Again, beautiful, beautiful views of the lake never left us. Every new angle revealed different personality of the lake. And you know, we just chilled. We honestly, we took our time to get to the hotel because we wanted to observe the beauty that you know surrounded us as much as we could so you know the two hours long walk might have taken us about four hours but we have no regrets about that there wow. Ooh, yep see some settlements it's a good sign after god knows how long we have sort of arrived Bondo, what's the way that's up? Out of words, words yeah. described with beauty. Mm -hmm. This is beauty, you know? Beauty. And I'm again proud of myself that I made it again. And that's it. <laughs> I'm so emotional right now. I already cried twice. <laughs> and I can't cry more. Uh, what about you, Naku? Are you proud of yourself that you were able to come here? So we stayed at the hotel that was closest to the lake because obviously when you're in Rara, the first thing you should be able to see when you wake up in the morning and the last thing to see before you go to bed should be Rara. Oh, also, don't forget to try local alcohol uh, made from Kodo. I mean, when you're traveling anywhere, you, you know, this should be your priority to test their local alcohols because, trust me, they're always good. We also had Marsi Tamil here, which is the local rice um, mainly found here in Jumla. And, you know, this is jam-packed with protein and a lot of nutrition. We also met fellow visitors, had a bit of fun, and we ended the night because we had to wake up quite early the next day. The morning came, we woke up. I would advise any of you guys traveling to Ara to bring your um, snacks, especially biscuits and you know dry foods, because um, you can't really get hold of them easily here. And also, it's a good um, something to have along with your yeah. Yes. Had our Special breakfast. We then left for Morma viewpoint on horses. I mean, if you were to walk, you would be um, two to three hours journey. It's same as how long the horse will take you to get there. But if it's your first time riding on a horse, like myself, then I would recommend you to try it. Um, you would also be contributing towards the income of the locals here, you know, whose living depends on this profession. So we reached Morma viewpoint again out of words 
the panoramic views of the mountain ranges complement the Rara Lake so well and in some way they appear to be the garden of this mystic lake. You can also see both Mugu and Jumla from this point. So this trip to Morma is, shouldn't be missed out in any cost. Somebody, who's it for? For myself. Yeah, that's right. That's right. After spending quite a lot of time up here, uh, we made our way down. But I think we're going to lose him soon. <laughs> okay. Oh! Nakul, watch out! Oh god, Nakul! Mar the party, okay? I feel Lord Neo. Okay, so this part might annoy some of you out there because. Yes, we swam in Rana Lake. It was an impulsive decision of ours, but you know, it was so worth it and it was so beautiful. The water looked even more mesmerizing from down here, honestly, but it was equally daunting to be so close to dark blue of nothingness. I love swimming, especially um, out in the wild, but this lake so far has been one of the scariest um you know water i've ever been in we were aware of the fact that swimming here is prohibited but sometimes when you're so engulfed by the beauty of something it's natural for you to surrender yourself to it wholeheartedly and i think this is what happened with us too if you decide to swim here too please consider the following crucial factors number one only go in if you can swim Two, the water may appear shallow, but trust me, it's very, very, very deep. Three, try to be as quiet as you can, um, you know, in order for you to just coexist with other beings underwater peacefully. Um, you know, you just respect their space. Four, don't stay in the water for more than 10 minutes. That's the max. Number five, no littering, obviously. You don't want to be leaving any of your traces behind. Last but not the least, number six, be prepared to face the consequence if you're caught by the officials. Don't blame me. <laughs> Being in the water felt so refreshing both for the body and the soul. And after that deep session, we um, sunbathed in the setting sun and it felt so peaceful because there is nothing like, you know, observing that evening rays of light. On our last night, we slept under the stars with no ceiling above us. It was very chilly at night, but you know, just the thought of being so free and outside the four corners of our room kept us warm throughout the night. The morning came in the most magical form. There's something so soothing about watching the sunrise first thing in the morning, you know, rather than drowning in notifications and updates from our smartphones. We left our hotel to make our way to Kathmandu. We got a boat ride to cross the lake, you know, surrounded by the water, open sky and the greenery all around us. Life honestly couldn't get any better than this. We reached Talja airport after a bit of walk. We picked the famous Jumla Humla Kosao that we had heard of since we were kids. Upon seeing the apple trees, um, we became kids again. Me in particular. 
Our flight got delayed and then cancelled. So we had to stay at Taja that night. Um, I mean, you can't really complain when you have such a beautiful place to be stuck at. But yeah, the weather here can be so unpredictable. So it is best to have a um, backup budget for, you know, events like this. Because we've been told by the locals that sometimes people do get stuck here for over a week. The next day, the weather didn't look so great. We had already given up on our hope of flying back that day, but somehow our plane arrived and we left with a pocket full of red apples and heart full of beautiful memories. <laughs> Baltin Bari Pani, Baltin Bari Pani, Tugjinuskinamutu, Baltin Bari Pani,